Brock University is an incredible campus, but it's more than just classrooms. There's all kinds of facilities in these hallways that most students don't even know exist. This year, our cameras gain exclusive access to these areas to show you what really goes on at Brock University. You're watching Brock TV, and this is Behind Closed Doors. Hey, this is Alex with Brock TV, and we are here with Scott, who is a microbiologist, PhD student. All that stuff that he just said. Today we're inside the Cairns building and he's gonna be taking us through the greenhouse and we're gonna see what they're growing in there. Anything we should be aware of? Uh, no, the greenhouse is, you know, it's just full of plants. There's a whole bunch of professors in there doing different research. Uh, the facility's brand new and looks really cool, so I guess let's just go. All right, around. awesome. Let's go check it out. Which way? Upstairs. In grade nine, they said not to eat anything in like a science lab. That's probably a good idea. So these are our plants here. When's planting season? For us all the time. All the time? Yeah. Most of these have a whole bunch of fungus in the pots with them. That's what our research is on, is that fungal species. So now I'm testing if it's getting carbon back, because carbon's difficult for fungus to get. Each individual room can have its own humidity, its own temperature, like its own maximum and minimum temperatures. Set it in the computer, and away it goes. So is that why you moved out of the other greenhouse? Did it have any of that fancy stuff in there? Or was it just like, like a greenhouse? Just your basic sort of climate controls, um, but nothing like the level we see in here, in here now. Sorry, what's that hanging thing there? I have absolutely no idea. It looks like two people hugging, maybe. Oh, yeah. Mm. Is this a uh, special soil that you're growing these plants in, or could I go buy it at, like, Rona? You can go buy it at Rona. It's the stuff you could just go buy at Rona, but then we sterilize it here. For some of the other groups, they just use basic potting soil. They don't need sterile soil, because what they care about is the plant. See, so lots of people just use this regular sort of potting soil. Wait, 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 is that sterilized? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was dirty soil. <laughs> And these are where you store the bagged lunches? <laughs> I don't know what these are. These are different research groups. I think this is Dr. Basur's work. They do a lot of like straight plant work related to bees and plants and all that kind of stuff, which is not exactly what I do. So I don't really know what's going on here, but there's actually dried plants in all these bags. This one's peanut butter. So that machine, the silver one, that's where we sterilize soil. Can we see that? So you can put anything you need in here, right? Biohazardous waste, water, anything you need sterile. This closes up, temperature goes way up. Pressure goes way up, goes for about an hour and a half. Open it up, everything's super hot and it hurts if you touch it, and, but it's all clean. And there's larger ones of these that are about three times the size, which you could fit people in if you were so inclined. And it's like 121 degrees pressure that would like probably pop your head. Really? Yeah. It'd be a good weapon in like a Bond movie or something. It is a level two containment lab, so we're able to work with level two microorganisms and low community risk, not such a big deal. Aspergillus flavus, it's like a fungus that could potentially cause like farmer's lung. So that's what happens when you like eat a watermelon seed and then a watermelon grows in your Right, which is a factually accurate thing that can happen. There is a level three containment lab upstairs, but that's where they do the West Nile virus research and stuff like that. Is this like liquid nitrogen? Actually it is. We can do cool stuff if you want. So, like whenever you do like a DNA extraction, it like needs to be frozen first. So first it gets lyophilized, which you put in this crazy machine, sucks like all the moisture out of it, and then you have to freeze the crap out of it, so. So now it's just like completely frozen. And what's all this dripping stuff? Is it dangerous? No, that, dude, that's liquid nitrogen. It's no big deal. Look, you can just. What? It's just liquid nitrogen. It doesn't do anything. It just evaporates like that. <laughs> See, and then it goes like cool little ball, like it rolls around the floor and stuff. It's actually like a really good way to clean your floor. Oh, and this is Camila on the microscope. Hello. This is, you know, where we do like all like the microscope work and we do a lot of green fluorescent protein work here. So a lot of those fungal strains have been transformed with a gene that once transcribed has a protein that fluoresces. So those are fungal spores. So when you're hitting with the right light, they glow fluorescent. So we're able to actually visualize them now using this method. And how big is the thing that we're looking at? Those are like micrometers, so we're talking like one or two micrometers, which is very small. <laughs> I'm tripping up. 
All right, so I'd like to thank Scott for taking us around the Phytotron. And for you layman's out there, that means greenhouse. Thank you for debunking the myth that everyone's just growing marijuana in. No problem. Even though I'm pretty sure you openly <laughs> admitted it. I did, I said I sort of, I said I'd be good at it, maybe, if it came to it. Okay. And I lost my job. <laughs>